Welcome to another unit in this course on social network analytics. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use Gephi to graphically represent our network data. In this context, I have used this exemplary data set and already calculated some network statistics. Then, if you want to do a graphical representation of this data set, you can switch from the data laboratory to overview. Then here on the right you see like the first graphical representation of your data and you can directly try to change this. So you have some simple tools here for selection of some of the parts of the network or your this dragging tool if you want to move either a set or single nodes in this graph. You can also use here the lens to make this larger or smaller or center this. So there's a lot of first easy tools to impact all of this. However, more interesting is the part up here on appearance and the part down here on layout. The layout part has the advantage that it offers a broad array of different algorithms to order, to automatically order all these nodes. Well, it might make sense that you introduce a specific order on your own if you have a smaller data set which is easily be oriented. If you have larger data sets, might be relatively problematic to enforce some kind of order. And that's where these layout algorithms come to help. So you can use different versions here. Some might make more sense in specific contexts than others. So if we, for example, try first this force atlas, if I run this, that's not really the most helpful thing in the context of my data set. So basically in this context, I could rather stop this. And I use something else, like here the Fructum and Rheingold. If I do this, no, this looks way better than the one before. Again, I can stop this, but it's a bit too large. So you can also use this part to contract or expand. Here I want to contract, so just make this one step smaller. No, it looks decently enough. I would still think that the first version looked a little bit better, but still, this is decent enough regarding my data set. So that's a nice way, especially if you haven't had any ordering beforehand. So the next question would be, how can I actually assign colors to nodes and edges? How can I also determine how large each of these nodes should be displayed? That's everything which can be done up here in the part on appearance. Here we have a menu for nodes and for edges. So let's start first with the nodes part. Here we have either unique, meaning I can select a single node and then change the color for this particular node. Or I could go with partitioning, then according to a specific indicator from my data laboratory, I can assign colors to specific groups. The most important thing in this context is the last part here, the modularity class, because if you select this here and you prepared your data well beforehand, you can simply say, well, each modularity class is one specific group of nodes. It's one cluster, it's one region, whatever. And then you can use here this part on partition to actually assign a color to one specific group of nodes. So that's the, I would think, best way to actually color your data. Another alternative to make it a bit easier on yourself and in particular if this is not necessarily really discrete of what you have there. If for example you want to color but in accordance to 
it should be darker the higher the eigenvector centrality is then partitioning isn't the best choice you have because then well as you see here you would have a lot of different numbers which you have to consider on your in this case it would be way better to use the ranking part because here I could go with betweenness and I just tell him this is the lightest color this is the darkest color and then color according to the betweenness score so that's another neat thing however working with the partition makes sense if you actually want to work with specific groups well that's for coloring the nodes the second part here that's for the size of the nodes and again I can do this with the unique part for each of the nodes specifically or I go with ranking then I can simply assign any of these statistics or any numbers I enter on my own which determine the node size for example here I could go say eigenvector centrality apply then he lists them by size of eigenvector centrality if I go with betweenness that's between us. So here we directly see a significant difference in nodes. If I go back, the original one was degree. That's actually the original graph. So that's the second interesting thing on this appearance menu. So the first part here is on coloring the nodes. The second one on the size of the nodes. The other two parts, as we can see here, is for the labels labels color label size and here you could do the same thing as before with the colors but i want to tell you more about this in a moment because labels is best done with the part down here so let's first go to the edges with edges regarding the color we actually have the same options as with the notes we can do this uniquely each by its own. We can do this if we were to have included a certain partition, so different types of edges, or, and that's another interesting thing, you could go with a ranking type. So here, for example, with the weight. I can say make it darker, if the weight is stronger, make it lighter, if the weight is smaller. So that's another neat thing to do with edges. However, what I want to talk about now, that's what I mentioned here, the labels. At the moment, we do not see any labels here at all. If you want to activate labels, you can do this either with any of these two large T's. The first one here is for nodes, the second one for edges. Or, even better, click on the symbol here on the lower right and you get a small menu which allows you, in the writer of labels, to actually activate node and edge labels. Also allows you to set colors, fonts for node and edge labels, change the size and give you additional interesting options back here. That's actually the parts I want to talk about. Because with the size, you can either use this part here, which applies for all of them. But you can also change here whether it's a fixed size, so it will always remain the same size, independent of the size of the rest of the network. It could be scaled. Scaled means if you enlarge the network, the labels also enlarge. If you make it smaller, labels also become smaller. Or, and that's a neat feature, you can use the part on node size. So the labels are larger for bigger, more important nodes, and they are smaller for less important nodes. I usually go here, in this case, in this example, with the scaled version, but the node size makes sense if you want to prove a point on most important players, for example, in a network. Then you can also, again, here change a bit the color. 
An interesting point to note in this context is the part object, which would copy the color from each of these nodes and use this for the label as well. Well, in some cases might make sense with darker ones, but not necessarily every time. So best here, go with text. But that's not all. We still have the part configure here. Because at this point we thought, well, label, that's just about what I, in my data laboratory, have listed under label. And that's the default solution. But if you go with configure, you can actually tell Gephi what he should use for labels. Well, first obvious choice, you can use the label. But for example, with the edges, in some cases, it's also a good idea to just use the weights. Display the weights. If I now go, I see for each edge the weight, the strength of this edge. So that's an interesting thing that you can actually assign values, whatever value you have as a so-called variable more or less here, you can assign as a label to either the nodes or the edges. That's really helpful in creating a lot of different, very interesting graphs. However, there's one problem left. If we build a really nice graph here in Gephi, usually we want to use this graph somewhere outside of Gephi. So we need to export this. The easiest version for this is the small camera here on the lower left. That's, as it says here, take a screenshot. The small arrow to the right gives you the configure option to first get an information on the size of the picture you generate and how smooth it should be. I would usually leave it at this, looks decently enough. And you can simply click here on this camera. He takes a screenshot and then you can save this as a PNG file. And then use this in different other context. Well, that's then basically everything from arranging your different notes coloring them in accordance to specific um, groupings, numbers, statistics, whatever, assigning them specific sizes, doing something comparable for the edges, and working with labels, different types of labels for nodes and edges as well. Yeah, as I said, that's basically it. So this concludes this session. I say goodbye and see you next time.